our merciful and loving Father. We are so thankful, our Father, that you have blessed us to be able to come before your old holy presence this morning to offer a worship service unto thy most holy name. And we are sure, our Father, that you are in our midst. We feel your presence. We ask your Father to please continue to guide your servants. Continue to be with us, Father. We know that you are with us. Because, Father, this time last year, some of us was just recovering from the virus, trying to get our strength back. Our brother whom you sent to teach your words this morning, he was separated from his family. But Father, his family is with him this morning. They was able to celebrate the birthday with him yesterday and we thank you, Father. We ask you, Father, to please, Continue to guide your servants. Continue to be with us. As we listen to your words this morning, Father, we ask that you open up our hearts and our minds of understanding. That we may be able to understand your truth and we we'll live a life that will please and glorify the most holy name. We know, our Father, that we can't live this life on our own. We need you every day of our life. And we constantly ask, Father, to guide us. Help us to be able to overcome any obstacles that we encounter in this life. So that we may be able to go on fulfilling our duties and serving our most holy name. We ask you, Father, to bless our children, all of our loved ones. Continue to watch over them and guide them. We ask you, Father, to please don't ever leave us alone. Continue to remind all of us of all of the blessings that you've given us throughout our lives so that we will not forget to call upon the most holy name. We ask you, Father, to bless our brother that will teach your words this morning. Guide him with your Holy Spirit. So that, Father, he may be able to teach your word with clarity. So that all of us who are listening will understand your truth and will be strengthened to go on serving you until the end of our lives. Our Lord Jesus Christ, we call on you asking your Lord to please continue to take our prayers to the Father. Asking the Father to hear our prayers and forgive our sins so that we can continue to serve you and our Father until the end of our life. Our Father in heaven, as we return to you in prayer, please continue to be with your servants. Bless those of your servants that are being oppressed, those that are being persecuted, those that are being in hiding because they are fear for their life, and those that are in jail. We know, our Father, that you know all about your servants. And we ask you, Father, to guide them and strengthen them so that they too may be able to continue to call upon the most holy name. Father, we truly believe that you will be with us throughout our worship service because we ask everything in the name of thy son, Jesus. Amen. Amen.
beloved brothers and sisters in the faith. Once more, we are very thankful to our Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ, not only for the continued borrowed life and strength that we have, but most especially for the faith that has been instilled in our hearts to fully commit and dedicate ourselves in giving praises to our Lord God and worshiping His holy name. We all know, brothers and sisters, that as we continue to sojourn in this world, we will encounter many trials, many problems, most of which are designed specifically for us to grow cold in our faith, to be led astray, or to stop and turn back and not be able to finish our race until we reach the grace of salvation. That is why it is very important for each and every one of us, including our whole household, our loved ones, to be able to continue in our praises, in our worship services to our Lord God, and to be able to follow His teachings and His commandments that will please our Lord God in heaven. We should also bear in mind, brothers and sisters, that the continuous enhancement of one's spiritual life has a great relevance in attaining salvation. God should see that we live in accordance to His will, to His teachings. Not only are we attending worship services, giving praises to Him, we seek our Lord God in everything we do in life, whether it be in our studies, in our livelihood, in our family, in whatever profession or vocation that we have, we should always put more importance in enhancing our spiritual life. Now, how can every household be able to live in accordance to the will of our Lord God? Let us study a lesson that was taught by Brother Rania G. Manalo when he was still administering to the church, giving utmost importance to the family as a social unit in order to ensure that every member of the family not only knows the doctrine, the teachings of our Lord God, but more importantly, are able to live in accordance to the will of our Lord God. Let's read what is written here in Psalms, chapter 34 and the verses 11 up to 14. Sons and daughters, come and listen and let me teach you the importance of trusting and fearing the Lord. Do you want a long, good life? Then watch your tongue. Keep your lips from lying. Turn from all known sin and spend your time in doing good. Try to live in peace with everyone. Work hard at it. Now, what did the Bible tell us that every parent should teach their children? That's why this verse is addressed to the sons and daughters. It says here, come and listen and let me teach you. That is why the teaching moment for every parent comes whenever he's able to talk to his son or to his daughter and is able to teach the, the, the words of our Lord God, the importance of trusting and fearing the Lord. So even the, the children in their very young age are able to learn things from school. When they go home, the parents are also able to review with them. They're able to, they're able to teach them about things that they find difficult to understand or probably to have an advanced study of their lessons. But more importantly, every parent should be able to spend time in teaching their children with the utmost importance of teaching them the importance of trusting our Lord God. What are some of the things that every parent should make their children understand? That if every child wants a good and long life, then he should watch his tongue. What does it mean that you watch your tongue? You go to a mirror and stick out your tongue and watch it? No, it means that you should... You should watch whatever that comes out of your mouth, whatever you say, because whatever you say comes from your heart. So you should watch whatever your heart dictates, and it should be keeping away from all sin. 
Do you know what sin is? Sin is uh, sins are deeds that are opposite to the commandments of our Lord God. So if our Lord God commands his children to love their parents, the opposite of that is what we consider sin. If God prohibits a person from doing something and still he does it, that is a sin. Or if there is a commandment to do something and he doesn't do it, that is also a sin. Those are the things that the children should understand that they shouldn't do, that they should keep away from. That's why they should try to live in peace with everyone and they should work hard at it. Now, how can one identify a family whose children were taught and properly nurtured by their parents? Let's read Proverbs chapter 20 and the verse is 11. Even children show what they are by what they do. You can tell if they are honest and good. Now, every child, especially at a very young age, are very honest. One, one way to prove this is you can talk to every child, ask them any questions, and they will answer you brutally honest, with all honesty. Because I remember when uh, there, there was uh, one of the children that I was uh, teaching way back in the Philippines when I was conducting uh, children's worship service. I went and do a visitation and I was uh, accompanied by some of the, the church officers because I was new in the local. And then one of the, the children there uh, shouted when we were at the door, uh, shouted that, uh, Mom, this is in English, of course, it was in Tagalog, she said, Mom, the church officers are here. So obviously the mom called the, the child, went inside, and then went back and then opened the door and said, oh, my mom told us that she's not here. So he was basically just being honest, but that proved the point that every child is honest in what they say. Now, this also goes to show that if you watch the children, you will see if they are properly taught by their parents. Because if a child becomes unruly, and that means he's not being disciplined or he's not being taught properly. If a child disobeys the commandments of our Lord, probably he does not understand or value the teachings of our Lord God. So the children should know the value of prayer. I remember there were times that we were probably on our way to school and we were late, almost getting late. And then so we were just about to go, uh, exit the door. And then my daughter told me, Dad, we haven't prayed yet. So I said, oh, yes, I forgot. So we prayed because she knows already the value of prayer. Whenever the, uh, every opportune time, whether it's before you eat, before you sleep, when you wake up, when you are about to go somewhere, we should always pray to our Lord God. And one very important thing that every child should know is that the teachings we teach them, especially during the formative years, will be inculcated in their hearts. This is something that is like written in a blank canvas. That's why we should be very careful on what we teach our children or what they see from their parents. Because whatever they see, they will think it's right. So what do you think a child will learn if he, his, uh, or her parents don't value prayer? If the parents don't value attending worship services, they would also think that, why am I going to attend worship service? Why am I going to do this, going to do that, if my parents don't even do that? So that's why the, every parent should serve as a good example to their children. Because when you look at the child, you will see exactly, they are already the reflection of what the parents are doing or not doing to their children in their developmental years. That's why every child should understand the value of prayer, the value of attending um, worship services. Just a while ago, my daughter asked me, Dad, do we need to sing with the, with the hymns? 
And I said, yes, because singing of hymns is a way of praising our Lord God, giving thanks to him and showing gratitude. So if we don't, then we don't want to give thanks to our Lord God. So when we sing from our heart as a commandment of our Lord God that we should do as a praise and worship to him, we are actually following God's teaching and his commandments. That's why the children should not grow tired or weary or irritated when their parents are trying to teach them. What else should every parent constantly remind their children? Let's read Proverbs chapter 1 in the verses 10 and 15. My child, when sinners tempt you, don't give in. My child, don't go with people like that. Stay away from them. Now, I already taught you what sin is. Sin is uh, a deed that is opposite to the commandment of our Lord God. So sinners are people who do not obey the teachings of our Lord God. Every parent should teach their children to stay away from sinners or people who are doing wrong things, who are not following the teachings of our Lord God. So sinners, of course, they're not going to show things that are uh, not very attractive. They're going to tempt you with something that you probably also like. So in this way, the Bible is telling us that the children should not give in, even if they're being tempted by sinners. So don't go with people like that. Stay away from them. Now, of course, the parents are not with their children 24-7. There will be moments, and a lot of them, that children are probably with their friends or other people, or they're no longer in the sight of their parents. So they will be able to have these situations that they have to decide on their own. This is especially the moments when the teachings of our Lord God, especially if they're inculcated in their hearts, will play a very vital role when they make those decisions. Should they stay away? from people like those? Should they follow when they are being tempted to commit sin? Or should they say no and stand firm that those are wrong and they should not do it? This is also the reason why the parents should also know their children's friends. Who do they hang out with? Who, are, who do they usually talk to? Because we may not know that those friends, those friends of our children, may be teaching them or influencing them on things that are contradicting what we are trying to teach them. When we are trying to teach them about good manners and right conduct, probably when they're already with their friends, their friends are saying, no, don't do that. That's boring. You shouldn't do that. You should do this and that. That are already contradicting our efforts to raise our children properly. That's why it is also a good idea to be able to know the children, even the children's parents, so that we know who they hang out with, who they're talking with. And they should also open up to the parents about their friends, about what they talk about, or the things that they are probably wondering, so that we may be able to guide them. What else should the children also remember? Let's read Proverbs chapter 19 and the verses 27. Stop listening to teaching that contradicts what you know is right. So if there would be people who start to teach our children things that contradict what is right, especially what is good, especially the teachings of our Lord God, then they should stay away from those and stop listening. Now, especially when children grow up, they would be very curious. They would be probably um, trying to experience so many things or try to learn so many new things. But if they contradict what is right, then they should be in the position and understanding to know that those are the things that they should stop doing, stop listening, or stay away from. Now, especially when they become teenagers or grow up um, older than that, they would probably also wonder, what are the other faiths? What are the other religions teaching? We have probably our children would have friends who also have different faith and they would be invited. Do you want to come to our Bible study? Do you want to come to our mass or to our worship service? 
you know, they would probably be curious. What do you do there? What do you listen to? And everybody should be able to have an open mind to, to know because when you try to stop them, that's, the mo- that's when they get more curious. Maybe that's better. And they, they, they start to think that it's better and they would start to do it. But when they start to listen and they soon realize, wait a minute, this is not the doctrine that I have received. This is not the teachings written in the Holy Scriptures, especially when they start to teach that our Lord Jesus Christ is God. Then by then we already know, wait, that's not what's in the Bible. So I will stop listening to that now because I know that those are not right. Those are not the teachings of our Lord God. So the children will go through those phases and they will be able to decide when to stop the, uh, to stop listening or when to stay away from those things that will contradict what they know is right. Now, what else should children always remember? Let's read Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and the verse is 1. So remember your creator while you are still young, before those dismal days and years come when you will say, I don't enjoy life. Now, while children are still young, they should not forget that it is part of their duty to remember our creator. Who is our creator? Our Lord, our Lord God in heaven. He is our creator. He is the one who created us and everything else in this world. So when something good is done and we don't remember it, we don't give thanks to it, is that a, sh- uh, a sign of gratitude or ingratitude? That's ingratitude, right? So when we don't show thanks or give thanks or we don't show gratitude, that is wrong in the sight of our Lord God. That is why even at a very young age, we should always teach our children that we should give thanks to our Lord God. We should always remember Him and we should always worship our Lord God. Now, is the teaching, the act of teaching our children about the words of our Lord God, about the value of praising our Lord God, is this something new? Is this something that was just taught to us right now as children of our Lord God? Let's ask what's written here in Psalm 78 in the verses 5 up to 8. For he gave his laws to Israel and commanded our fathers to teach them to their children so so that they in turn could teach their children too. Thus his laws passed down from generation to generation. In this way, each generation has been able to obey his laws and to set its hope anew on God and not forget his glorious miracles. Thus, they did not need to be as their fathers were, stubborn, rebellious, unfaithful, refusing to give their hearts to God. So this is something that has been handed uh, down to God's people. For he gave his laws to Israel, God's nation, during that time. And the commandment was for the fathers, for the parents to teach their children, so that those children will also teach their children and their children's children. It means it's from generation to generation to be able to teach about the goodness and love of our Lord God in heaven, his glorious miracles. Now, the problem is when in one generation, the parents stop teaching their children or they're probably not teaching them as much as they should be teaching about the words of our Lord God. We should not rely on just letting our uh, children attend worship services and rely on what's being taught. It is the duty of every parent to be able to guide their children about the reverence to our Lord God in heaven. So what can a parent share to his child if he doesn't have that spiritual life, the faith that he should be transferring to his child, the faith to our Lord God? So if a parent does not value praying to our Lord God, how can he teach his child 
how valuable praying to our Lord God is. How can the parent teach their children about the value of attending worship services? I remember a moment in my life when I was with my daughter. She's still very young. I was troubled and I was crying and, and I felt so helpless. And I didn't want to tell my daughter about my problem. But then she said something to me that surprised me, actually. When she said that, Daddy, do you remember what you told me? When we have problems, we should pray to God. And then she asked me to pray. And we prayed. And at that moment, I realized that I thought what I was teaching her was something that she wasn't really understanding or listening to, but she remembered. And she knows that when we have problems, we pray to our Lord God. When we receive blessings, we pray to our Lord God to give things. When we are trying to decide on something, we pray to our Lord God. That is why this is something that should be transferred to our children so that they too will have that spiritual life to be able to nurture their children to come as well. For every generation, it is our responsibility to ensure that the spiritual life of our children will be as healthy as ours when we are worshiping our Lord God. Now, there is a risk, brothers and sisters, if we don't place utmost value to this commandment of our Lord God of nurturing our children, that there's a risk that we might forget on teaching our children. children. So what is the reminder in the Bible? Please listen to Deuteronomy chapter 4 in the verses 9. But watch out. Be very careful never to forget what you have seen God doing for you. May his miracles have a deep and permanent effect upon your lives. Tell your children and your grandchildren about the glorious miracles he did. Now, this is a reminder for each and every one of us, especially the parents, to be careful never to forget the things that we have seen God do in our lives. Now, we have different lives, brothers and sisters. We go through life differently. We may be going in the same direction, but we are walking in different paths. We experience trials in different ways. But in every time that we worship our Lord God, we should remember the many glorious miracles He has shown us. Every day is a miracle, brothers and sisters. Every day when we open our eyes, knowing we still have our borrowed life and strength, it is a miracle. Probably other people think of miracle as the parting of the sea or being swallowed by a whale, a big fish, and then being thrown out to another island. This, this is something that we should understand. God gives us miracles every day. We should tune our hearts, our minds, and our eyes, and our ears, our senses, to identifying those miracles in our life. Even if we go through trials, those are miracles. Why? Because our Lord God is trying to strengthen our spiritual endurance so that we may be able to go through life and finish our race. Because if we were to fail, then we will not be able to receive the grace of salvation. That's why God is giving us those trials because he knows we can overcome them. With God's help, with our faith, we will be able to overcome every obstacle. But we should all the more trust in our Lord God. Every miracle that we have in our life, let us share them with our children so that they would understand why we have this kind of faith so that they may too share our faith and be able to give thanks to our Lord God. Every day, brothers and sisters, let us not waste our time. Let us always spend every moment we have to be able to share 
our love, our faith with other people, especially our household, especially our children, because we know that our life will not last. We have a very limited time here on earth, but let us spend every moment of those time, not only making a difference in this world, not only in giving praises to our Lord God, not only to ensuring that our children would have a good future, but also to ensure that their faith will be strong enough to withstand whatever trials will come their way. So that even when the time comes that we are laid to rest, our children will be able to continue to go on and to be able to finish what we have started and we will all join one another in the kingdom of heaven on the day that we will receive judgment from our Lord Jesus Christ. What is the promise of our Lord God? If we are able to ensure that we will always remember our Lord God and we will pass this on to our children and we will continue to live the life in accordance to the will of our Lord God. Let us read the last verse here in Psalm 128, 1 up to 4. Happy are those who obey the Lord, who live by His commands. Your work will provide for your needs. You will be happy and prosperous. There is happiness. There is peace, tranquility. The blessings will be given unto those who will live by the commandments of our Lord God. Obedience to the will of our Lord God can ensure us one thing that we will be always guided and blessed by our Lord God. Whatever work we will do, it will supply all of our needs. It will provide for our family's needs for as long as we put our Lord God first. We will be happy and prosperous, meaning we will be blessed in everything we do for as long as we put our Lord God first. That's why, brothers and sisters, before we stand and pray, let us remember the many miracles our Lord God has given unto us. Let us remember that we still have our brothers and sisters who are still going through severe trials in their life. There are those who are in jail. There are those who are separated from their families. There are those who are still in hiding, persecuted and oppressed. But until this very moment, our Lord God still holds them by his right hand and continue to shelter them and protect them. And it is our faith that we are only being used as instruments so that we may extend to them the help that they need so that when the time comes, when they will be set free, when all of this will come to a resolution, then we know that we have done our part. We have fulfilled our duties and we have remained faithful to our Lord God and His commandments come what may in this world. Let us continue to do that. Let us show our children the right way of praising and glorifying our Lord God. Let us serve as good examples to them so that they too will have that faith and firm resolve to always put God first in their lives. Let us all stand and we shall pray. Our loving Father in heaven, Thank you so much, O oh God, for all the countless blessings that you give us every day. Thank you for the life, the strength. Thank you even for the trials. Thank you because you are there watching over us, protecting us at all times, nurturing us with your love, and showing us the right path that we should take. Father, we have never been perfect before your sight. At many times, we have failed you. At many times, we have fallen short of your expectation. But instead of punishing us with the same severity of our sins, you chose to be merciful and benevolent. You chose to cleanse us of our sins and iniquities. And you continue to guide us. And you continue to strengthen us so that we will be able to finish our race. Father in heaven, we pray for all of our brothers and sisters all over the world. 
especially those who are going through severe trials. Only you, Father, can give a resolution to all of this. Please, Father, continue to strengthen each and every one of us. Shelter us from all harm and danger. Continue to guide us as we sojourn in this world. But most especially, Father, please bless our children. Protect them at all times. Keep them away from harm. Keep them away from evil people. Please, Father, always be there for them. Send forth the Holy Spirit. Please enrich their spiritual life. Let them grow up knowing you, having reverence for you, and having that godly fear that you will always be the one that they will worship and they will continue to prioritize you in their lives. Father, please bless each household of your children. Continue to guide us as we sojourn in this world. Bless us with everything that we need but enough for us not to, for, to forget you, that we will always give thanks and return all the glory to your holy name. Our Lord Jesus Christ, thank you so much. Because of you, the Father listens to our prayers. Because of you, he grants our request and forgive us of the many sins that we have committed. We are confident, Father, that you have heard our prayers, that you have forgiven us of the sins that we have committed, and that you will always be there to guide and protect your children. For all of these things, we humbly ask and beg in the name of our Lord, Christ Jesus. Amen. of salvation from our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen.